I hope the screen is visible and audible as well. Just anybody can confirm. Uh, yes, sir. Confirm, sir. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So we are discussing about the uh, scaffold. So yeah, a scaffold foundation should be verified before erection. So whenever you are uh, doing any scaffold erection, you have to check for the the foundation, loose or any fragile packing, like bricks should not be used as support. So for a height of more than 15 meters, steel scaffold should be preferred and not a wooden one. Nowadays, the wooden ones are banned. For any major activities, 100% they are using steel scaffolds. A warning notice should be displayed a near or incomplete or damaged scaffold. In the sense, they used to have the tags, red, green and yellow. So the red will be still it is under construction. Yellow will be with uh, some fall protection we can go. Green will be ready to use. Based on the condition of the scaffold, the tagging system should be followed. And dismantling should be carried out in a reverse order or action. The material should not be thrown from heights and should not be a left laying here and there, and they should be properly collected. So once the erection is completed or dismantling is completed, the scaffolding material has to be collected in such a way and also kept properly. Now, after completion of work, all scaffold material should be stored in a dry, a protected place using a racks, boxes, and trays. Then type of scaffold, one is a uh, pole type scaffold. It may be independent structure or a putlock type erected on supports uh, near the wall or any other structure. And the uh, uprights like the vertical uh, poles uh, should rest on the strong foundation to support the load uh, without a settlement. And they should not be kept uh, more than three meters apart. And tubular uprights have a steel base plates and placed on the wooden sole plates. Here, the base plate and the sole plate. The sole plate will be on the ground. Above the sole plate, we'll have a steel uh, base plate. And soft ground should be a well rammed and also a level. So whenever you're erecting a scaffold on the soft ground as loose soil, it has to be rammed up to avoid the settling of scaffold. So this is the one of the example for the uh, scaffold, independent tied scaffold. So this is the sole plate and over that this square box, which is a, a base plate. These are the uh, longitudinal bracings. So we used to call us a bracings. And this is the platform. Here we have the uh, tobo. And this is a putlock scaffold. So here it will be supported with a fixed structure. And here also the components are same. Another one is a rolling scaffold or mobile towers. So these are the portable type will be used for the maintenance activities. These scaffolds move the on rollers and also the the coasters with a uh, wheel locking device and they are portable and also most useful for maintenance work and to prevent overturning the height should not be more than three times and the minimum uh, width of the base and also the minimum base length should be four feet while pushing and pulling that uh, tower a person should not be right on it we should not allow anybody on the top of the scaffold or the tower if you want to move from one place to other place. 
The tools and materials should be removed before moving and the top working platform must be handrails and also tow boats. So here also we have a tow boat. Wherever you are, in which level you are working, there will have a tow boat. Then a swing or hanging scaffold. So this will be based on the uh, level of height. It will be adjusted from up and down. Here are the platform is hanging on two chain pulley blocks, ropes and also hooks or supporting beams. And suspended platform can be raised or lowered as per the need. So in the which level you want to work, it will be lowered and also elevated. And the movement of both the ends uh, should be simultaneously, otherwise there is a chance of uh, tilt or people may fall. It should be equally taken down or equally taken up. And the anchorage and also the suspension gear should be uh, strong enough to withstand the load with a, a good factor of safety. Then working on roof, this is also one of the critical area. A serious accidents happen due to the fall of a person and uh, working on roofs. A fall through a pressure roof and also sheeting, a loss of balance due to the slope of the roof and also effect of wind and also insufficient care while working at the edge of the roof constitute the, the principal cause of such accidents, which could be prevented by appropriate safety measures like a crawling or walking boards, a railing, safety belt and also safety nets. So here majorly the problem with the uh, the roofs will be one is a bad weather, unprotected on the edges, slope and also slippery surface. All these will be the major the causes leads to accidents on the roof. And the use of a safety belt alone uh, while working on a fragile roof or work at height more than six feet, two meters is not permitted. And it is dangerous and also uh, many fatal accidents have happened because of this condition. And sound platform adequate support or a safety net should be also provided. So if you see a flat ladder for the roof works, a cat ladder or a crawling board. These are the crawling board. It will come with a vacuum cups and it can be fixed on the uh, roof so that people can walk on those a crawling board to avoid the fall. Apart from that, we will have in between lifelines to protect the fall. Then working in confined space. This confined space will be negative heights. So how we can safeguard ourselves uh, in the uh, negative heights or pits where you are working. And working in vessels, tanks below ground level in the pits, uh, cellars and also basements or inside the confined spaces such as silos, tanks and also vat vessels, boilers, gutters, etc. The confined space, how do we confined space? Any inputs? What 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 is mean exactly the confined space means? One entry and one exit. Okay, one entry and one exit, it is one of the conditions. Fine. Hello, sir. Yeah, please. Hari Ram, sir. Hari Ram, batayi. Sir, confined space एक वो critical condition होता है जिसमें entry और exit का मतलब एक सीमित मात्र में रहता है. हमको जाने का एक ही रास्ता है, फिर आने का भी एक ही रास्ता होता है. और वो सीमित मात्र में होता है, ज़्यादा एक स्पेस नहीं होते हैं. Okay. उसमें uh, okay. Any any other guess? Oxygen level top count. Okay, oxygen level top count. Ventilation proper on the board. 
Okay, ventilation. Okay, ventilation is one of the point. Yeah, okay. Okay, fine. So basically, a confined space, as you people mentioned, all, all inputs are correct. One is limited exit and limited entrance. It is not designed for continuous occupancy. And also, the presence of oxygen is less. And also, there is a chance of a hazardous atmosphere in the confined space. This all together will call it as a confined space. Level of oxygen, presence of hazardous atmosphere, limited entrance and egress, and also not designed for continuous occupancy or not designed for continuous work okay it is mostly enclosed and partially open and is at atmospheric pressure and temperature and has limited and restricted opening and uh, is not designed for intended for a normal place of work like office has unfavorable natural ventilation due to the stagnant air or no free air movement like one of our colleagues said ventilation Oxygen deficiency or enrichment, enrichment will be more than 23%. Deficient will be below 19.5. And nitrogen atmosphere. And has contaminated air with the toxic or flammable gas, dust, etc. And may cause engulfment in unstable or loose materials. So these are the various hazards which will present in a confined space. If you see these examples of uh, storage tank or pipelines, xylos, manholes, and also uh, digester, which means nothing but it is also a, one of the type of a tank. These are the, some of the examples for the uh, confined space. So if you see a hazards here, the poor lighting, oxygen deficiency, contamination of toxic and also flammable gases, and unexpected uh, activation of machinery. Sometimes unexpectedly the machine gets activated, so suddenly a metal wheel <clears throat> starts coming into the confined space. Then engulfment, that is means engulfment, and then non-specific work practices. It is not a regular work practice to work with. So what kind of safety equipments for working in a confined space? I think most of the people know it is a, a tripod they used to have, and also we used to use the wooden ladder, especially for the, uh, in case if you're working in any, uh, working with any reactors, especially uh, glass lined reactors, they, they won't allow us to enter with any metallic shoes or even they won't allow us to use the shoes also because it will get damaged. Okay, this tripod will be used for the, in case of any emergency to uh, rescue the people from the confined space. Okay, with this we have uh, done with this uh, topic. If you have any questions, we can discuss.
Okay. If no questions, uh, then shall we wind up the session? Sir, in confined place, uh, how mm -hmm. we can reach up uh, hazardous gases like nitrogen and all? So gen nitrogen generally we will uh, we'll not see. Basically, in the confined space, we have uh, multi gas detectors. Basically, there you will see the earlier uh, the flammable atmosphere, and also you see the uh, carbon monoxide, and also uh, you check the other gas parameters. We'll have multi uh, detectors. There it will have a length tube will come. There we used to check in three levels. One is at the bottom. One is at the middle of the confined space, one is at the top of the confined space. Based on the density of the vapors, these vapors will accumulate in the various levels of the confined spaces. By using this uh, multi-gas detectors, we check in the three uh, levels of the confined space. So LEL will be always zero and oxygen will be between 19.5 to 21. And then uh, CO will be zero whenever it is showing any uh, additional parameters more than zero. Again, we'll do the purging or we, we used to do the uh, putting in uh, uh, fresh air or we, again, we used to ask them to clean the, uh, I mean, uh, confined space ones. Yeah. Okay, see you then. Thank you so much for joining the session. Happy weekend. We'll meet in next session.